There's a number of things that I think of when I read Samuel 9 and 10. First off, the fact that it wasn't Saul that thought to go to see Samuel, but his companion, Zuf. Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold, now there is a city in this city, a man of God, and he is an honorable man. So this is the servant that say in this to Saul. So Saul, even though he was a goodly man, it says down here, a goodly and there and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. He wasn't very perceptive. He wasn't I mean didn't take great perception, I guess. I don't know, but he I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. The fact that he didn't know apparently about Samuel, but his servant did. And then Samuel, you know, it says that he and uh, Saul would prophesy. But, you know, before this, Samuel was doing all the prophesying. You know, God told Samuel that Saul was going to come. See, it says, in the, the Lord had told Samuel in his ear day before, Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of ben Hamin. But he also told Samuel that he his asses were, were found. Um, and as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And it doesn't mention where God told him that, but obviously God did. But Saul, you know, wasn't... It was kind of needing to be led, led about. But the interesting thing is that, you know, for what Saul became, you know, he had, the, he had the evil spirit, you know, where he cast javelins at David and got very angry very easily and, you know, numbered the people when God had not told him to do so and, you know, went against a direct command of the Lord about slaying everything from the land of whatever whatever land it was that he was supposed to, like, wipe them all out and kill all the animals even. And then was it Samuel that said, or, yeah, I think it was, that said, what, what is this bleeding of the sheep, you know, that I hear? You're, you're hiding out some animals. But anyways, that, that was where Saul's big undoing there. I mean, Saul's. Did I say Saul? Yeah, Saul's undoing was when he did that, and then was rebuked. But it said, you know, you shall be a different man. Um, God was going to change his heart. The Spirit of God was going to come upon him. And it was going to change his heart right there. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. That's in First Samuel 10. So he... But the, but the point I kind of missed on what I was saying is that even though God knew his end, what his end was going to be, God still chose him as the one to be his anointed. And then Saul sh screwed up on his own. And he, he made him a prophet. He said that, you know, thou, you, you shall... The Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. And then all the folks started picking on him like, Is Saul also among the prophets? So anyways, interesting guy Saul is. And we're going to get on with the uh, reading of... First Samuel 11 coming up. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. He was a Benjamite, which is well known. But isn't it interesting? He came from the land that the children of Israel went after. Remember with that whole thing of the the one fella. I wish I could remember names, but these names aren't the easiest ones to remember. So <laughs> that's my excuse anyway. Remember the guy who cut up the. Or was that? Yeah, yeah, that was Benjamin, right? The, within ben, the, tri, the the city of Benjamin, Gilgal, or okay, I better I better not make guesses, but yeah, there was a lot of stuff that we've read about in the last number of uh, days about Benjamites. So, anyways, that's just something to keep in mind and something for you to comment on in the section below if you know anything significance with that.